Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and today I would like to talk to you about the APU. Now this topic was actually suggested in the comment section of one of my videos, so thank you very much for that. I saw the comment and thought actually APU, very interesting topic, there's quite a bit to talk about. So yeah, let's do it. If you have a topic you want me to talk about, anything you're not sure about, or anything you're interested in, uh, just leave a comment and uh, if I think I can be of help, I will put it on my list and then of course we will discuss it. Okay, auxiliary power unit, let's go. The APU is located in the tail of the aircraft. You can see the exhaust here of the APU and the inland flap is down here. It is essentially nothing more than a small jet engine that is using fuel from the wing tanks. We will be looking at this later on. And that gives us three things. It gives us electricity, it gives us air conditioning and it gives us bleed air for the engine start. Okay, we are on the flight deck and we would like to start the APU. Before you start the APU on the A320, two things need to happen. Uh, on the flight deck, you need to perform an APU fire test. And your colleague, or if it's you, doing the outside check, he or she then needs to check this indicator here. This is located on the rear fuselage on the outer side and basically what you're looking at here is an indicator that shows you if the fire suppression system for the APU is still armed. The A320 will automatically uh, fire a fire suppression system in the APU on the ground should there be a fire alarm. The idea is that if the aircraft is parked on its own and nobody's around and there's an APU fire or something like that, the aircraft will just extinguish it all by itself. So if you see this and it's not red but black, that means something has gone wrong and you should never start the APU just call maintenance and have it checked out. Okay, so how do we start the APU correctly? Well, the correct procedure is that you switch on the master switch, you wait for three seconds, and then you press the start switch. On the Airbus, all electrical switches are done automatically. You never have to tell the aircraft where to get the power from. There's a logic to it. I'm not gonna go into all that detail now, but uh, essentially, whenever a new power source comes on board, the aircraft will automatically prioritize that power source according to a certain logic. So here we go. The flap is open. That's the inlet I've shown you before. And now the APU is firing up. Okay, the APU has just completed its uh, startup sequence. Two things. First of all, if you enter the fuel page, you can see here that the APU is drawing fuel from the left hand side. So what this means that usually you will always have a slight imbalance of fuel. You can already see it's uh, we have slightly less fuel here than we have here. The longer you sit on the ground with the APU running, the bigger the imbalance. But this is perfectly normal on the A320 that on the left hand side you will always have slightly less fuel than on the right hand side because after all we need the APU to start the engines. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the APU bleed located here. Uh, essentially this will provide us with air for the air conditioning system and for engine start. So imagine it like a, a source of very high pressure air that can be used to either spin the fan or to put cold or warm air into the cabin. Now, most fume events on the A320 series occurred after the APU had been started and had only run for one or two minutes. So at least at my company, it is procedure not to switch on the APU bleed until two minutes after the APU has been started. So on a hot day, when we're desperate for the aircon, the minute the APU runs, we usually start the timer and once we have two minutes here that's when we finally switch on the APU bleed and get some nice cool air. Okay so next we're pushing back and we're starting our engines which is of course done with the help of the APU bleed. Okay. 
Okay, both engines are running. We don't need the APU anymore. Engines are now taking care of all electricity and air conditioning on board. So, are there moments where we switch on the APU whilst airborne? Well, there's only really two scenarios I can think of. One is an abnormal situation where the checklists ask for it, which can happen. And the second one is for performance reasons. Uh, I'm one of the pilots that is certified to fly into Innsbruck. And when you arrive at Innsbruck, before you land, you switch on the APU and we leave the APU on during takeoff until we pass a certain altitude. This increases the performance on the engines, which is really what you want in Innsbruck because you're surrounded by very high terrain. Uh, one further note maybe, which can be quite important, the APU has certain limitations in terms of when and how high it can be started. There are certain different limitations depending on the situation. I would say just remember 20,000 feet. Below 20,000 feet you can start the APU, above that I just wouldn't because it gets a bit more complicated. Okay, we have left the runway, so when should you start the APU? Well, it really depends. If you expect a fairly short taxi, you can do it pretty much straight away. If you expect a long taxi, it might be worth waiting a little bit. Um, as I said before, the APU uses fuel and fuel is expensive. So think about that and uh, decide when you want to switch on the APU. Okay, parking brake is set. The APU is running. The engine cooldown time has elapsed. We can switch off the engines. Now the APU will take off automatically in terms of power supply to the aircraft. However, as you can see, the APU bleed is still off. Why is it still off? Well, there are two different procedures regarding the APU bleed when you arrive at the gate. This is an Airbus A320. You're welcome to switch it on. If it's a nice hot day or even if it's a freezing cold day, you want it on straight away to keep the temperature in the cabin nice and comfortable. However, if it's an A319, the procedure is slightly different. You see, it is all about this part here, which is the air intake for the APU. It's where the APU sucks in all the air to use uh, for the engine itself to run, but also for the air conditioning. Now we have the engines here and here and they've just been running, they're still very hot and there's still some fumes and smoke coming out at the back. On the A320 the distance between the inlet and the engine is fine, but on the A319 they're quite close together. And so on the A319 we do not switch on the APU bleed until 2 minutes after engine shutdown. So the procedure for the Airbus A319 is when you shut down the engines once again you start the timer. If you've seen many of my other videos, you realize we use this quite a lot. And after two minutes, you can switch on the APU bleed. That's the difference between A320 and A319. Okay, and we have finally reached the end of our day. It's our last day. We all want to go home. So uh, there's a checklist we have to run. Uh, again, this is about the APU. I'm not gonna go through everything here now. Uh, there's a few things you need to do in order to shut down the aircraft. The main things uh, for this video is that you have to switch off the APU, then you have to switch off the external power, and then finally you have to switch off the batteries. However, there's a little catch with that. So if we would now switch off the APU and look down and go to the APU page, you see, the APU is not just immediately shutting down, it takes some time. And most importantly, you have this message here, flap open. So this is the APU inlet. As long as this is open, you're not allowed to power down the aircraft. So now we have to wait until that flap is closed 
and then only then are we allowed to disconnect the external power and shut down the batteries okay the apu is finally shut down the message flap open has disappeared and now we can disconnect the ground power switch off the batteries and that's how we leave the aircraft and now we can finally go home okay and that brings us to the end of my video about the apu the auxiliary power unit i hope it was useful i hope you found it helpful and who knows maybe you learned something new today that would be amazing and with that i look forward to seeing you in the next one and until then all the best bye bye